this may go a little over four. Welcome back, everybody. This is going to be our report out session. Everyone in the room should be sitting at a table that has been numbered. Let's just confirm this. Table one, table two, table three, table four, table five, table six, and then we're going to have two virtual tables we will call seven and eight. And we will now use software to determine who's going to go first. We're basically here at random.org slash lists. I put in the numbers. I click randomize. And now you can see that we have a list of random numbers associated with these groups. And going first will be number six. Number six, as will all the groups, have four minutes to report. I have an on online stopwatch that will be used. As soon as you hear the four-minute buzz, please go and have the next group come up. The second group on deck will be group number one. So group number six, please come on up. <laughs> Hi, this is Helen Hu from Computer Science, I mean from Utah. <laughs> and we discussed our implementation plan. So we have uh, people here from a high school, we have someone from the State Office of Education, and then we have someone who is not employed by the State Office of Education or a teacher so that we can, I can say whatever I want and not get fired. And <laughs> So our implementation plan is to build on our successful ECS program and also the existing CS teachers. And so those are overlapping, but not the same group of teachers. And we looked at that. Our big plan is we'd like to do a code.org partnership. So we'd like to figure out how do we find enough teachers to convince code.org to come into Utah and run a professional development on, uh, for computer science principles. So we're going to target specific teachers. We're going to look at the districts with the most computer science teachers and start there. We're also going to look at the obvious uh, school districts. So if we don't include Salt Lake City, people will ask us why we didn't include Salt Lake City. So we'll be including those. Um, and we realized we needed to find key personnel at the administrative district level to make sure these teachers will come to the professional development. Otherwise, they won't come. And so that was part of our discussion. Uh, Cody is from Canyon's district. And I asked him, well, what would make, <laughs> what would convince a Canyon school teacher to show up to the PD? And he had a, someone in mind that he said, this person, if this person told me to do it, no matter who I was, I would show up. And so that is the person we're going to have to target. That's all I have. Thank you very much. I believe they're going to yield the remainder of their time to the next group. So it'll be group number one with group number three on deck. Hello, my name is Astra. In our group, we also talk a lot about implementation and motivating students to take computer science. There we had tons of ideas, tons of resources. We found resources from NC WIT to help the counselors. We found resources from code.org and a myriad of other resources to help recruit the students, maybe using high school to recruit middle school. We have tons of ways to get the kids interested. And this will be my first year teaching computer science. I taught engineering last year, and we have so many students in our high school that want to take computer science. I'll now teach engineering and computer science. But we also need at least one more teacher. And that's where we found the problem. We're still interviewing. We have a lack of teachers that have the computer science credential to teach in our state. So that's where we need the help with implementing. Uh, the University of Texas has a program called UTeach, where they allow people who are education majors or other people to become certified computer science teachers. But I think there was a study they did. They only had like seven participants over a few years. We're still having trouble finding 
computer science teachers. So that's where we need support. We need programs that teachers can say, hey, I think I want to teach computer science. Can you help me? That's where we need the most help. And I believe they're going to yield the rest of their time, which means <laughs> this third group could really have an extensive presentation if they'd like. Uh, so now we're on group number three with group number five on deck. Uh, we also talked about our uh, implementation plan, and uh, we're all well. Two of us are teachers at one school uh, school district, and one is um, a uh, tech coordinator. So uh, we had some different goals and and some different needs. Uh, for the some of the pros, if I can't see the pros, I won't remember them. <laughs> some of the pros are. Uh, that we already have at our school district, we already have the infrastructure. We have computer labs, and we have um, existing computer programming classes. Uh, there's a lot of flexibility built in the course with uh, choice of language, which is a path we took previously already. Uh, we like that it had well uh, was well well rounded, um, and still had some skill focus. And uh, there's a very good strong resources available from uh, the contingent of people here and online. And for the cons, we just had a couple things. Uh, David and I are teach at the same school district, so we're we're in a situation where we already have an AP computer science class taught by the math department. That's the Java-based one. Through the CT department, we teach a computer programming class, and we've been mod uh, modifying that as the year goes on. We did a lot of we did Scratch last year and App Inventor and some other things as well. And so what we're looking at is does it make sense to essentially hollow out that class and replace it with, with the course we've been talking about today. So that's something we're, we're considering, but the one of the things that David and I are grappling with is we have a, a lot of our students that are taking our class right now are freshmen, and we're not sure that they're going to be able to handle the additional rigor. So by changing the class, we then take away this opportunity that students are currently enjoying. So that's a, that's a challenge, and that's one of the things we have to think about. Um, so that, that's the issue there, and then obviously for Josh here, um, he's got some licensure issues and job status issues that are that are making it a challenge for him as well in Wisconsin. So, thank you. At this time, we're going to have group number five come up with group number four on deck. Group number five. Good morning, or good afternoon. Um, I'm from Virginia, and some other people at my table were from California, so we're both going to talk separately. Um, we would like to implement the course um, either the next year or the year after. Um, we have some people in the county that are testing the course at one of the other high schools. Um, some problems that we saw, because my administrator is actually here with me today. Okay. Um, so some things that we were talking about um, that we might run into some problems would be uh, recruiting the students or getting the word out about what the class is about because um, we do offer the other APCSA course right now. Um, the availability to offer the class as far as in the sequence of math because right now our AP class counts as a math credit so how would that fit in with the sequence of math classes. Um, Educating our counseling department about the class and you know the prerequisites, what kind of students we're looking for. Um, staffing, um, that's about it. Uh, 
Okay, and we're the group from California, another group from California. Um, I have a new principal coming on board. He came on board July 1st, so I'm going to, before school starts, have a discussion with him about the new class. Uh, I need to write a pilot outline in my district that's required. Uh, we can also work with UCLA and their ECS people to get some help. We're both okay with credentialing, so that's not a problem. Um, problem is advertising and recruiting students. Uh, and so I'm going to have to educate my guidance staff as to what this class is about. And um, I was asked to write a grant for Toshiba through the math curriculum people, but I think I'm going to do a, a grant to both address math and computer science to try to get some tablets. I'm sure you can share some of what you were hoping to talk to the guidance counselors about. Um, well, right now, the only thing they know about computer science is coding. So I would have to educate them about this new class and the fact that it's not completely coding. I'm sorry. The question was, how would I educate or what would I need to educate our guidance staff about? Thank you very much, Group 5. And now we have Group Number 4 coming up with Group Number 2 on deck in the virtual reality groups coming up very soon. Hi, so our group was from all different states, so we really focused in on recruiting students because um, my school has, we had two, now we have four sections of AP, CSA, so, um, and I was brought in to start an intro and kind of just start a sequence, so we'll definitely revamp um, the intro course to look something like this for next year, but the big deal will be recruiting students. Um, so we are definitely going to have conversations with counselors. Um, a plan for me this year is to kind of do some of, we went to great workshops and some of the uh, outreach, for example, we're going to have a parents night, we're going to have a coding, like a, a gallery, a creative gallery night um, to have kids come in and see what's going on just to start a buzz. Um, because my school is very student driven, so if the students want it, they'll get it. Um, we want to visit girls sports teams, that's a big deal too because uh, Many of the girls, me in particular, I, I remember being, Mr. Kick was my teacher, by the way. <laughs> um, that's going to come up. Um, so I just remember that you heard this whole programming and this whole Java thing, and it scares some people away. So we're going to uh, make it a point to reach out to the girls uh, to make sure that they see that this class, while it will have programming, it won't be exclusively programming. It'll be, they, get, they get to be creative if that's what they want to do. Um, and we definitely, my school did an awesome job, and we were talking about that at the table, that CS Ad Week in, I think it's December, um, I, I forget, but code.org, that's a great buzz. We went to cafeterias at my school, and during the week, we just had laptops, and it was myself and the other computer science teacher, and we just said, try to code, try to try, see what this is. And again, we reached out to girls to try to get more girls. Um, and really educate other departments. Even I'm a math, ours is in math, and other people on my uh, table, they were in the CTE, Education to Careers. But just to educate our colleagues on what these courses are. There's many people in the math department themselves that won't know what this class is. So we're going to need to educate them as well so that they then can talk to their students about it. In terms of PD materials, I don't know about you guys, but this was one heck of these three days were awesome, and there's I feel like there's tons of material out there. That CS 10K community, I'm definitely going to use. CSPrinciples.org, I've already I've just bookmarked. That's all I did was bookmark on my computer. Um, the mobile CSP is an actual workshop that you can sign up for, and so is the CS, help me here, John, CSP for HS. It's uh, Jeff's workshop. I signed up for that too during this. Um, uh, so, so there's plenty of material. And then Mr. Kick's website, because I kind of looked at it because he's my teacher and I want to see what else cool stuff he had. His website's really cool too, so his website as well. Um, and then just for support, because many of us are probably the only teacher. I'm not this year, but last year I was the only computer science teacher at my school. Um, reach out to your local chapters. If you don't have one, start one, um, because 
you need to talk to people about what works and what doesn't work. And I love these efforts. This was my first time coming to a CSTA, and I loved it. Um, hopefully, I can come back. Um, and then that CS10K community, uh, John said it was just all, I, I'm not that familiar with it. I'm learning about it, but John said it was awesome. Um, that's it. I will have to mention that Deb was always the very shy person, but she was the first group to almost fulfill the entire time requirement, so congratulations, Deb. Uh, the next group is group number two with the virtual group after that. So our group talked about a lot of different things, and we were from different states and also different levels, and we decided to um, put on this paper uh, recruiting. And uh, we came up with a few things, some conversations from things that we've done um, that we think work. And um, the first thing we came up with, it's a really simple thing, and some of these are little things, but having personal conversations with students, you know, talking to uh, a girl in one of your uh, teams you coach or uh, in one of your classes and say, you know, I think you would be great for this class and uh, recommend them or uh, we have online recommending, just online recommend them and uh, hopefully they'll sign up for the class. Um, target parents going to 8th grade nights, uh, AP nights, uh, PTAs, having an award ceremony, inviting people, uh, making sure to have role models uh, for uh, students uh, to take these classes um, and we also talked about near peer conversations so like having high school kids go to middle school um, having university students going to the high school to talk to them about computer science and computer science principles um, then we talked about targeted media so when you uh, send out uh, letters or make flyers or posters make sure they are good for all the groups, um, especially underrepresented groups. Uh, the PSAT letters, this is something that's done at Georgia Tech, they look at PSAT scores and send out letters saying that, uh, you know, because of your score you should take computer science. And the letters are different for um, males and females. Uh, field trips, so we talked about all different types of field trips, you know, the kind of that middle school kid going to high school, high school going to the middle school, bringing stuff, bringing robots, um, going to industry, having industry come in, so just exciting students about computing and computer science and computer science principles. Um, and oh, press. So make sure you get out in the press, uh, whether it's the newspapers, uh, TV, hosting events, having showcases, uh, you know, just, just let it out there and get it out there um, and using press uh, for that. And a lot of the other things we had were like little things. Uh, Lisa said something about uh, this: the, the computer science classes weren't on the um, uh, list of, of classes. It had to be a fill-in class, and there was only like 100 kids that filled it in because they knew about it. But then when they put it on the actual thing and they could check it off, it doubled in size, and there was like 200 kids. So little things can, can make a big difference. And we also talked about counselors and some of the other conversations that were had that they should really know about it because they're the ones recommending students too. Okay. And other teachers, I know another group said it, but um, other teachers already get a survey about CS principles and they've come up and started talking to me about it. Um, I, I don't know, right? AP sent out a survey, Lynn, is that true? About CS principles to all AP teachers? <laughs> Did anyone of you get it? Yeah, this AP CS principles. There was a survey that went out. So it was probably from our marketing um, uh, uh, Yeah, and teachers have already started asking me, so I'm already pushing for it. <laughs> At this time.
time we're going to have a representative come up and uh, represent one of the virtual groups. And here we go. Hi, my name is Daniel, and I have imaginary friends. <laughs> <laughs> this is Alex, and my other imaginary friend. I, her name is Mary, but her logo is like a picture of Lisa Simpson, and it was fascinating. And I swear this was not a hallucination, although we did have our hangout on Bourbon Street downstairs. <laughs> um, we didn't have a poster because there's something about you get on Bourbon Street and you forget about what the directions are. But we had this sweet Google Doc, and we we did the, the thing where we talked about the things. And so mainly Alex was the teacher with with the, the background to fill this out. Mary is from a small technical college and her perspective as a computer science teacher in a technical college is how Mary supports K-12 teachers in getting more computer science students in her door. So part of our discussion went off book and we talked about pipelines and how higher education representatives can be advocates for computer science in the schools. So the, to answer the question, to get a teacher licensed or approved to teach computer science in Washington, it's fair game. It's if, if you have a license, you can teach computer science as long as the district says it's OK. Um, in terms of computer access and need, um, again, this is mainly my imaginary friend Alex's perspective, but Alex has awesome access to hardware. Alex has limited access to the internet through really restrictive firewalls. And so in order to do anything that would involve a YouTube link, you have to get approval from the district, how am I doing on time, to get approval from the district and to do that, that approval only lasts a week. Yeah, so Alex has all the computing hardware in the world, but to get any meaningful access to information, data, anything like that, it's, it's a no-go. Um, people that Alex collaborates with is mainly computer science teacher. There is a, a single computer science teacher within the district at a sister school. And Alex is not a CSTA member and didn't really know much about the, the benefits of being a member. And the, the main thing was, I, well, I, I don't know if I can afford that. CSTA membership, it's free. Look it up, csta.acm.org, it's awesome. Um, so we were looking at recruiting plans, and we talked about posters, demonstration sessions. Anytime you can have kids touch a robot, they get excited. Um, speakers during CS Ed Week. And um, I, I was telling about Tammy's cell phone carnival and what a rocking idea that was because there's an engineering class in that district that could, could leverage having robots, having code, having robots that know code, that's, that's fun stuff. Um, having maybe a coding club. We talked about the power of mobile devices and when kids can, can, can get their code <laughs> on a mobile device, it's just something different in them. It's, I did this on my phone and this is the world to me. Um, teachers at my school could help me recruit by giving me 10 minutes once a year to come in and talk to your students, by advocating for my classes when you see a student who could benefit from them, uh, sponsoring or sending kids to an hour of code event during their class. Uh, the guidance department needs to know what CS is and furthermore needs to know which kids belong in CS. And Alex said the guidance department at his school said, well, you don't meet this minimum math credit, you can't get in. And we were talking about CS principals being a totally different thing. And CS principals could take that kid who doesn't quite get algebra right now, but when they see it in terms of something else, maybe that idea of a variable will kick in. And through that lens, they'll get algebra, and the rest of it all will fall into place. So should the counselor be the gatekeeper? We didn't think so in our discussion. Um, if I have questions or need advice, where can I go to? There was only one other teacher in the district. They had a STEM coordinator, an engineering teacher, and then we spent a lot of time talking about the benefits of the networking that you get through CSTA. And I see that my time is up. So um, I swear I did not hallucinate. Alex is a real person. <laughs> <laughs> I can vote for that. <laughs> Very nicely done. We have one final virtual group. We were the popular chat room, apparently. That's right, party room. So we had 10 people, 9 people, something like that. No surprise, Mindy. I know. <laughs> it's a draw in the me. So uh, we, we actually had a great variety of people uh, in our room. So we had teachers that have never taught CS before, some that are even just considering a career change into CS, so they haven't even started teaching. 
uh, computer science. Uh, we've had a couple experienced people. We had some university people. So we had a little bit of everything, which actually turned out to be a nice group because it did enrich our discussions and provided lots of different uh, perspectives and data points that people could refer to. Um, most of our discussion you know, really was just kind of around how do we get this thing started? And so especially with a lot of the new teachers in the chat room with us, of, you know, they like the idea that they have kind of a year to figure this out and find the good resources, figure out what they need, uh, figure out the best thing that will work for them, and to kind of really find those best practices. We talked about programming languages of what's best, <laughs> and so as you guys know, there's really no answer to that. It's, you know, usually whatever you're comfortable with or what you know or whatever serves your purpose or your timing, and so uh, some good discussions around that. Um, we talked about sharing resources, um, organizations, so we talked to NCWIT and CSTA chapters and Tapestry and Perkins funding if you can get it um, and, and everything. Um, interestingly enough, one of the, the most sort of directed comments was sort of from, I guess there was a general sort of anxiety about how do you get going from this point and there's so much information out there but it's not very organized. And I think there was a sense that instead of having 50 uh, uh, pilot sites to look at syllabi that it would be much easier if there were three very different syllabi to look at. Um, but there was also a sense, again, when, when people sort of uh, calmed down a little bit, um, none of them were worried about this for this year. And there was a sense that by you know next year, by next summer, there are going to be you know uh, much more organized uh, uh, course packages out there, textbooks in the work, things like that. So I think that. Um, some of the anxiety, I think, is sort of premature um, uh, that, that's here. Um, interestingly enough, the, the things that, that we, we found that there was generally uh, people felt very supported by their schools uh, and that there was a sense from their schools that they wanted to expand computer science. So it wasn't that this course was going to take away something else that they were offering. Um, so that was a, that was a nice thing. Um, from from their perspective. Yeah, and the freedom to implement that however they thought they needed to, too, so that was nice to hear. Uh, one of the things that we did discuss also was the certification issue, as you know, since we did have quite a variety of teachers in there, what does that look like in different states? And whereas there were some roadblocks and some bumps, nobody seemed overly concerned by that, uh, and that they were able to kind of you know go over those hurdles and work their way through the system and are happy to be able to kind of get to where they want to be and, and what they're doing. So that was nice, too. I'd like to thank all the groups and all the presenters. And now I think we're ready to go to the next section of the agenda.